Okay, this will be the video directions for completing the slotted clamp down. This will be for group number one, or group, and actually this, eight, excuse me, group two. So, <coughs> what we're going to do with first here is we're going to hit the slotted clamp. And I'm going to go ahead and open this with Adobe Acrobat and say okay. The part I want to create today will be this one here. So, again, it's nothing more than a basic review with extrusions some extrude cuts, and a couple hole wizards. So I'm going to go ahead and start this one from a top plane. I'm going to create a rectangle first to get this thing started. I'll then come back, add in my fillet tools, and go ahead and start making in these little V cuts that you see throughout this part. So going into SOLIDWORKS, I'm going to start with the metric part by doing a File New, Metric, and OK. I'm going to go to my design tree and highlight my top plane. I'm going to go ahead and start a new sketch and create a corner rectangle starting from the origin and moving up and to my right. Hit escape to deactivate the tool and your F key to center the rectangle up on the screen. Now I'm going to dimension this rectangle to a height of 16 and a length of 70. So go ahead with my smart dimension. I'll hit this bottom edge here at 70 and this right side over here at 16. I'm going to go ahead and extrude this at a height of 7.2 millimeters. So we're going to go ahead at this point and go to my feature toolbar, extrude a boss base, and type in 7.2 and replace it with 10. Enter and check. Now again, the blue indicates to me that we don't have material on here. So let's go back and look. And it looks like we're going to make this out of a chrome stainless steel. So going here where it says material in my design tree, I'm going to right click, add a material, go to my steels and look for chrome stainless steel, which is towards the bottom. Apply and close. Now I'm going to go ahead at this point, I think instead of actually doing the fillets now, I'm going to go ahead and start making some of these V cuts. So I'm going to go over to the right side face right here. And I'm going to draw the V cut on this right side and cut it all the way through. So looking at this here, I'm going to kind of blow up on this view so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to create a V cut that basically is a triangle that is 4 millimeters wide by 4.7 from the center to the left and 5.7 up. So I'm going to use this as my marker. So going to the right hand side right here, going to the word sketch, turn on my sketch tools, and do a normal tool. I'm going to use my line tool to create a V shape for this part. And then I'm going to close this V up. Now again looking at this, I'm going to make this across the top here at 4. Um, I'm going to make the bottom edge here to this edge here at 5.7. And I'll go ahead and change that so you can see it better by hitting this done document and doing a 0.1. And then the last one is, is 4.7 from the center to the left. So 4.7 from here to the side. Now, the problem here is that we have a triangle that is equal. So the two sides here are going to be equal to each other. So I'm going to hold my control key and hit the left angle and the right angle and make them equal. And now you see that the, fu uh, the final triangle is fully defined. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and do a features. Actually, before that, I'm going to hit my spacebar isometric. And now I'm going to turn on my feature toolbar and do an extruded cut. I'm going to make that extruded cut go through all. Check mark. Now, I'm going to repeat this by going to this plane up here, or this front face right here, and create three of these same type of triangles and cut them across. So again, I'll go back to SOLIDWORKS, highlight this front face, start a sketch, spacebar normal to, and I'm going to basically grow or create the same exact thing I just created before, a little V cut like so. But I'm going to create three of these. And another one to the far right. And 
<clears throat> All right, now looking at my dimensions. I see that these are actually all the same. The TYPs are all the same. So what I'm going to do first is dimension the top to four. I'm going to go ahead and hit escape for a second and control key and make all three of these all equal. Okay, I'm going to go ahead from the side over here. I'm going to start with a 5.7 from here to here. And then I'm going to add in the other two dimensions, 29.3 and 29.3. So from here to here will be 29.3. From here to here will be 29.3. From this tip to the side here is going to be 5.7. That was going to be stay the same all the way through all these parts. Okay, last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and make all these three endpoints horizontal to each other. And then I'm going to finish by making the angle of each of these lines or these right here. Now this one here is parallel to, oh, that's, I got to get rid of this. This is not good. Okay, I want to get rid of that parallel. That should not have happened. I'm going to go ahead and hit this side here, control key in this side here, and make them equal. I'm going to repeat that all the way down through all three of these. Equal. Last but not least, control key this line here and this line here, and make them equal. So now if you look at this from an isometric, there are my three triangles. I'm now going to take my features, extrude a cut, and do a through all. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add on my fillets. So I'm going to add on the, the outside fillets, and then I'm going to fillet this, uh, actually take that back. I'm going to add on the outside fillets first, then I'm going <coughs> to add my holes, <coughs> and then add a fillet to the top surface. So what I want to do right now is I'm going to fill these outside edges to a radius of 2. So go into my feature toolbar, fill a tool, and make this 2 millimeters. I'm going to hit the four corners here and here. Oops, that should be 2, not 29. And this one over here and there. And hit my check mark. I'm now going to turn on my hole wizard under my feature toolbar. And I'm going to start with these top two holes here. Okay, these are flat bottom counter bore holes. I'm going to use the number of 5, 8, and 4 to define these holes. So going into SOLIDWORKS, I'm going to pick my counter bore hole, which is the first choice in the first row. I'm going to make the ANSI metric hex bolt. That's fine. I don't care about the size because so I'm going to use a show custom size. Now in my three box, I'm going to add the three numbers, 5, 8, and 4. So I'm going to go 5 here, 8 here, and 4 in the last box. Now I've got it defined. I need to now go to Positions tab and pick this top surface. Spacebar, normal 2. I'm going to drop one of these in each of these little boxes right here. And escape to deactivate. Now these are currently under defined because I need to dimension them to their spot. So to do that, I'm going to go back and look at what I got to dimension. So it's going to be 4.5 from the top, 16.25 in, 37.5 between, and these two are horizontal to each other. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead with a smart dimension and add on this 4.5. I'm then going to take a second here and use my control key to take the left center and the right center and make them horizontal. Now I'm going to add in the 16.25 and the 37.5. So I'm going to go from the center to the right hand side and make the 16.25 enter. Okay. 
and the center to the center at 37.5. At this point, it shows fully defined, so I now can hit my check mark. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on a fillet tool, and I'm going to fillet this entire upper face so all of these little nooks and crannies get filleted. And the fillet I'm going to add on here, you're going to see, is going to be in this note, a point two. So going back to SOLIDWORKS in the feature toolbar, I'm going to turn on my fillet tool, Put a 0.2 millimeters, not two, going two. I'm going to highlight this top face here, here. Um, and then I need to go into, I think that's it. Hold on, sorry, let me look again. Um, no. I need to do these edges here and here, here and here, along the bottoms. These back edges here and there and up here. Um, I believe these should be edged. Yep, they should. This, ooh, maybe not, maybe not. Um, this end down here. I don't know, is there one in the middle? There is. Okay, I may have to add, actually add these on twice. So I'm going to go ahead from here. That's good to there. I'm going to hit my check mark. And then I'm going to turn my fillet tool on one more time. And sometimes you have to play this game where you have to get these to kind of come in and work. Sometimes SOLIDWORKS is not very friendly, so you have to actually do your fillets twice. So those look good. And then finish off with this side and that side there. At this point, I believe this is now done. And just to make sure, I'm going to highlight my fillet with a right click, hit the beach ball, and highlight the word fillet 2, and add some color. And then I'm going to do fillet 3, same thing, beach ball. Fill it three and add the same color. The only reason I'm doing this is just to make sure that everything shows the same red that I see in this drawing here. <coughs> All right, almost done. So now what I have left to do is I have to add the holes to the front side here. And those holes are circles with dashed lines around them. That indicates we are using a tapped hole. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to go to my Features Toolbar, and we're going to do a hole wizard again. This time, though, we're going to use a tapped hole, which is the first box in the second row. I'm going to reset my custom sizing. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what the note tells me. It tells me that these holes are an M2.5 by 0.45. So let's go see if we can find that. So size will be an m 2 by 0.45. Is it 2.2? 2.5, sorry. 2.5. Okay, not going to worry about the custom sizing. It's through all. Make sure thread callout is off and this box is checked on. With this done, we go to Positions tab and pick on this face right here. Do a space bar and a normal two. And now what I'm going to do is under each triangle, I'm going to drop one of these circles in there. I'm going to escape to turn the tool off and now I'm going to smart dimension these to place. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and smart dimension from this side to this side at 5.7 29.3 
and from here to here at 29.3. The height of these are going to be at 3 millimeters from here to the bottom. And then I'm going to use my control key to highlight all three centers and make them horizontal. I see this is fully defined at the bottom, so I'll hit my green check mark, and my part is now complete. At this point, I want you to do a file save as. Save this in your CAD 3D parts folder as what do we call this one. This is going to be our slotted clamp down. Your underscore your last name and hit save. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and do an evaluate in my mass properties. I see this weighs 54.77 grams. It's very small. I'm going to go ahead and print this mass properties to my L108 class and say OK. As soon as it prints, go to the printer, come back to your desk, and go ahead and close out your mass properties box. We're now going to go ahead and set up the drawing. This drawing is going to be on an A metric border with a scale of 3 to 2. So what I'm going to do at this point is go in here, do a File New, GHSA Metric, and say OK. I got my slotted clamp down right here showing an open document, so I'll do the arrow, Front View, Preview, Hidden Lines On, and Scale will be Custom at 3 to 2. I'm now going to go ahead and drop the front view in, the top view, right side, and isometric. Hit escape to turn it off. I'm going to grab the metric box, go ahead and move it down, and delete this box off. Left click metric, and go where it says border from none to box. Okay, this scale will stay right where it's at. So I'm going to go back and add color to this part right here. <coughs> Bring this down in a little bit. And we go up here and make sure with the crossing window, left click and draw across. I'm going to highlight and get rid of all the center lines. I'm now going to go ahead and highlight this note right here. Do a control copy. Go back to SolidWorks. Turn on my note tool and drop this below. Inside that box, do a control V. Now in this case, you're going to put your 54.77 grams. Oops. And then I'm going to double click and make sure that this is underlined. And that now looks done. I'm also going to go here and take this note right here and highlight it. Control copy because we always want to make sure we have all the details. I'm going to go back into my drawing. I'm going to turn on my note tool one more time and put it in this upper corner and do a control V. Make sure it's left justified and hit escape. Okay, now in this top view, I'm going to right click inside this box, go down to where it says tangent edge, and make tangent edges visible, because I want to see those cuts. I know the answer key does not show that, that is incorrect, and it should have. So the last thing I'm going to do is go to my model items, and I'm going to get all my dimensions into place. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my annotation toolbar, hit the word model items, and make sure all six of these boxes are checked. Go to entire model and import into all views. I'm going to hit my check mark and all my dimensions come in. So I'm going to go back and start comparing them. 4.5, 16R2TYP. Let's look at those. These are in the right spot. That looks good. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this case 
bring that up, add in my TYP. The 16.25 looks good. Bring the arrows in, 37.5, 4.516. The only thing I'm missing right now in this one is I am missing the whole call out here. Okay, so in this case, the whole call I'm talking about is this one here. So what I'm going to do in this case is under my annotation toolbar, turn on the whole call out tool, click on this outside edge, hold on, whole call out, click on this inside edge, and pull up and left click. Adjust this up a little bit. Bring this down a little bit. Let me bring that up. You may have to start doing some adjusting to it. I'm just trying to make sure I have enough space for all these parts. I'm actually going to bring this one over a little bit more this way. That looks good. Okay, now looking at this right side view, I'm going to get rid of this fillet here because I don't need it. I have the four, which I'm going to drag to the right and add in a TYP. The 5.7, I'm going to add a TYP. The 4.7, I keep right there. So these are all defined. Okay, looking at this here, I have 229.3, so I'm going to delete 1, 2, and 3, get rid of those. Those will stay the same. I see I have the 3, this should be a 7.2. So I'm going to go here, left click on the 7, go to None Document, and a point 1. I see I have this whole call out, I'll bring this up this way like so. I don't need this 4, and I don't need this 5.7. The only thing I have left to add is this point 0.2 TYP. So I'm going to take my Smart Dimension tool, click on this, oops, click on this arc right here, draw this up, change the none document to a point 0.1, and add in TYP. At this point, this part is complete. So now what we have to do is change our title block from SOLIDWORKS Drawing to Quiz Review Slotted Clamp Down. Now in this case, it looks like my font is too big. So I'll double click that and change it from 18 to a font size of 16. Scale is going to be 3 equals 2, period will be 4A, today's date, 12 2, 19, and then you're going to put your first initial and last name in the drawn by box. At this point, this drawing is done and ready to turn in. So I'm going to do a quick save, save all, and save them to the same folder I have all my 3D parts. I will now go ahead and do a file print to the GVH L108 TE Lab and say OK. Go collect your drawing from the printer, take your mass properties and attach it to the back of the paper and staple in the upper left hand corner. As soon as you have that done, put it in the collection box and begin to move on to the next part. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask.